welcome to the Vaping Depot's third vaping workshop. This is our vaping advocacy and activism workshop where we talk about legal and political education to prevent overregulation of electronic cigarettes. Some of the proposed regulations that are coming into uh, the media sphere people are talking about aren't very controversial. One of those that aren't very controversial is to keep electronic cigarettes and tobacco products out of the hands of minors. We totally support age verification to keep tobacco products and e-cig products out of the hands of minors. But some of the proposed regulations are very controversial. And one of the controversies involves the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA. So we want to take a brief look at how we got here, because some of these proposed regulations may eliminate former smokers' access to electronic cigarettes as an alternative altogether. So a little overview on how we got here. In 2006, the e-cigs were introduced into the European Union and the U.S. By early 2009, the FDA had blocked the import of electronic cigarettes into the United States and e-cig re e retailers sued. By the middle of 2009, the FDA said that they had tested a couple of brands of electronic cigarettes and had found trace chemicals, but a month later, an independent review found that the FDA tests were riddled with errors, that it was flawed, scientific method. By the 2010, the court ruled that the FDA couldn't block e cigs being imported in the United States. Later, uh, the court ruled that the FDA could only regulate electronic cigarettes as tobacco products, not as drug delivery devices. By 2011, the FDA announced plans to regulate electronic cigarettes as tobacco products. In 2012, the big tobacco companies in the United States started to get on the bandwagon. They, uh, the third largest tobacco company in the United States, Lorillard, bought blue e-cigs in April 2012. In the summer 2012, the second largest tobacco company in the United States, R.J. Reynolds, bought Views e-cigs. And later the same year, uh, the largest tobacco manufacturer in the United States, R.J. Reynolds, or uh, no, Altria Group, bought Mark 10 e-cigs. February 2013, the CDC released a report stating increased awareness and use of electronic cigarettes. In March of 2013, former U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Richard Carmona joined the board of directors for Enjoy, one of the largest electronic cigarette manufacturers at the time. Uh, I guess it shows that August 2013, the Altria Group bought Mark 10. In April 2014, the FDA released the proposed regulations on electronic cigarettes. So, the, like I said, the uh, regulations that the FDA wants to put in start with prohibiting electronic cigarettes from falling into the hands of minors, which we support. But they, it goes a little too far, we feel, with the, some of the other regulations. Uh, they want to treat e electronic cigarettes like regular cigarettes, which we feel is not proper. It, it, it's clear that electronic cigarettes are not cigarettes. They're not a tobacco product. We don't feel like they should be regulated as one. The FDA says they have the authority to do this under Title IX of the FDCA. And what they say is Title IX gives them the authority over new tobacco products and modified risk tobacco products. So what would the proposed regulations do? Well, in a nutshell, they're going to require manufacturers to register with the FDA. They will then require those manufacturers to get each product approved by the FDA. They will require that all ingredients in e-liquid would be listed on packaging. They'll prohibit any free samples. They're going to require warning labels about the nicotine, and they want you to say that the substance is addictive. They want to prevent statements that say that e-cigs are less harmful than traditional cigarettes. There'll be no sales in vending machines, no sales to minors. Internet sales would be restricted, so you couldn't sell the e-liquid online. Uh, they ban all flavors except for tobacco and menthol. It would ban advertising. And it would raise the minimum wage to buy tobacco products to 21. And the FDA says that they're going to start rolling this out in April of this year. The problems with the regulations are... There's a lot of them. We support the prohibitions on the sale of minors, as we said. But most of the other proposed regulations are going to be difficult, if not impossible, 
for electronic cigarette retailers to weather. Last year, the FDA only approved one new product. And the FDA says that the approval process will take 5,000 man hours and $100,000 per item. It doesn't specify if like items can be grouped together. So if somebody develops a new battery, if it had different options in it, even different colors, it doesn't specify that you could get one product approval for all of them. It could be for each one. We sell currently over 10,000 different products, and I know that because I put each one of them into the database um, when you consider all of our different variations and options. So it's simple math. If you have 10,000 products and it takes 5,000 man hours to do it, it could be 50 million hours of paperwork that you would have to do overall. And that equals 50 million hours is 2 billion days or 5,707 years. That's a lot of time. And it could cost up to a billion dollars to get FDA approval for all 10,000 products if you can't lump them all together. So these don't account for products that we don't carry, so the cost overall for the industry is going to be a lot, lot, lot more. Our products are already labeled. All of our e-liquid e is sold with its ingredients listed on the packaging. And it, they're gonna, the regulations are going to require that e-liquids meet some as yet undefined FDA standard. And you'd all also be subject to random inspections. And it's not clear whether they mean manufacturers or retailers. Uh, the ingredients in e-liquid in e have been known for a long time. Uh, our e-liquid, for instance, is made of five FDA-approved ingredients. And they've each been approved individually by the FDA for human consumption. More problems with the regulations. We would be prohibited from letting customers try e-liquids. So you couldn't try different flavors to find out what you like. You couldn't find it, try different nicotine levels to find out what you'd like. You'd have to buy it, try it, and you can't return it. So it would end up costing the consumers a lot of money to find something that works for them. We won't be allowed to say that e-cigs are safer than traditional tobacco, although it's clear that they are. If internet sales are banned, any place that doesn't have a vape shop to service them won't have any place to go to purchase electronic cigarettes. And if flavors are banned, many smokers who got away from cigarettes might return to smoking. And, and that's because when you quit smoking, you stop liking the taste of tobacco. And even if you start with a tobacco flavor when you start vaping, you're going to probably want to transition to something else as you get less and less attuned to those flavors and your sense of taste and smell comes back. Now, anti-smoking and vaping activists say that e-liquid flavors are only designed to attract youth to electronic cigarettes and then get them hooked on smoking. But several major studies have proven this to be false. Smoking leads to vaping, not the other way around. As smokers try to get away from the harmful effects of combustible tobacco products, they come to vaping. Teens and youth, they find in these studies, are more influenced by their peers, by family members, and by outside stressors to choose either to smoke or to use an electronic cigarette than they are by any flavors that are offered or advertising. 80% of ex-smoker adults who vape use some flavor other than tobacco. 60% use sweet flavors, and more than 99% of all e-liquid used is used by adult former smokers. So what we propose is better regulations that aren't restrictive to the electronic cigarette retailers and manufacturers and the industry as a whole. We support tougher age verification laws with stiffer penalties to those who do sell to minors, with no restrictions on flavors, age verification on our internet sales too, but don't lump e-cigs in with tobacco products because they're clearly not a tobacco product. And we want to grandfather in all the e-cig products available as of the FDA regulations going into effect. This is something that was brought up by Speaker of the House John Boehner, who wrote a letter to the FDA and other regulatory bodies and said, anything that's available when you, you put your regulations into effect should not be subject to your regulations. So what can we do? 
That as regular people, we sometimes feel like we don't have a voice or that they're not listening to us, but I'm here to tell you that we do. And recently, the FCC was considering allowing uh, telecommunications companies that provide the internet to throttle users' internet uh, at their website source or at the source that they get their internet. And just recently it was announced that the FCC plans to rule to make the internet a public utility. And this was done by people getting out there and telling the FCC, we do not support these rules that would allow telecommunications company to, companies too much power over how we use the internet, and the internet should be a public utility. So we won, and we know that we, if we have a voice all together, we can make stuff happen. So what do we do? We want to start conversations. When you hear friends or family members start to say things about e-cigs that you know to be false, like they're made with antifreeze, or they're dangerous, or the batteries explode, you have a base using our workshop information or other information that you have, and tell them, no, they're totally safe, and they're not cigarettes. It's not the same as smoking. We're not trading one addiction for another. It is a totally different thing and it's helped us to become healthier people. And when people are healthier, everybody saves money. The second thing you do is write a letter or an email to your elected representative. And don't just start with, you know, the federal representatives that we have, our senators and representatives in Washington, D.C. We want to hit the people at the county level, at the city level. All of these politicians have the power to help put in common sense regulations. Next, call your elected officials because that has a lot of power. If you can get somebody on the phone and you can tell them how electronic cigarettes have helped you or somebody that you care about, it speaks volumes to how they're going to react when pieces of legislation come to them and how they vote on those. Ask your representatives to support the grandfathering in of e-cig products. So what we have available today will at least remain available. It may hamper new innovations. We may not get new products in as quickly or if at all, but at least we would have what we have today. Next thing, join Kesaw.org. Now, as I mentioned earlier, they were founded in 2009 in response to regulations that were coming in at that time and they've helped thousands of areas across the United States defeat um, extreme regulations on electronic cigarettes, taxation and uh, vaping bans. And what they do is they send you information about federal, state and local to your area um, legislation or regulations that may be coming in and they tell you what to do about it. What to say, who to write to, where to go for these meetings, and what to say there. Um, legislation and regulation is happening all around us. It's not just the FDA. A lot of localities are considering different um, regulations and laws that will affect electronic cigarettes, their retailers, and the users. Some of the state and local regulations that are being considered right now include taxes, indoor vaping bans, defining electronic cigarettes as tobacco products, retail permits, sales bans, and prohibiting sales to minors, which, as we mentioned, we do support. The indoor use bans would lump electronic cigarettes in with traditional cigarettes, and we've made it clear throughout these workshops that they're totally different. Smoking has been prohibited in public places for a really long time, but vaping isn't the same as smoking. There's no evidence that says we should lump e-cigs in with cigarettes. The evidence that does exist actually says that electronic cigarettes are a lot safer than traditional cigarettes. Some indoor vaping bans that are being considered in localities don't make exceptions for electronic cigarette retailers and vape shops so that people can try them out as they buy them. Taxes is a big deal and a lot of localities are considering this. Many states already have or are considering sin taxes on electronic cigarettes or wholesale taxes to the retailers. In Delaware, they're currently considering a 30% tax on e-cig products, and Minnesota just passed a 95% wholesale tax on e-liquids. And what that means is that if a retailer were to buy a batch of e-liquid and it cost them $10, then they would tax you at whatever percentage rate that they tax at, in Idaho it's 6%, um, on the $10. 
which doesn't sound excessive except when you're talking about a retail store they have to buy a lot so it ends up they have to pass these costs on to the consumers and we don't want the costs to go up Washington State almost passed a similar law last year and another one that's virtually identical is on the legislative agenda for this year taxes when passed on to the consumers may convince smokers not to bother reducing the harm of their habit by switching to e-cigs and that's not something that we want because if everybody who smoked today switched to electronic cigarettes right now millions of lives would be saved the sales bans some states are considering banning electronic cigarette sales except when they're sold in pharmacies so they want to say that they're a, a drug delivery device that only a pharmacy can sell them New York is currently considering banning all flavors except for tobacco and, men and menthol, independent of any FDA restrictions on flavors. But little evidence, there's little evidence that flavors attract youth. In fact, there's more evidence that the flavors are attractive to former smokers as they get their taste, sense of taste and smell back. And we support sales bans to minors. We can't make this more clear. We want everyone to know that we do support not selling electronic cigarette devices to those under the age that they can buy tobacco products. Licensing requirements would require retailers to buy permits or licenses to sell e-liquid. We have a store in Montana so we know that they are currently considering just such a requirement. Now their permit fees aren't excessive but in Indiana their permits cost five thousand dollars and it's unfair to subject vapors to these unreasonable taxes because the retailers have to to pass these costs on down the chain and we don't want our, the cost to go up on the, for the consumers. That's the end of the presentation. We appreciate you taking the time to support the electronic cigarette industry. Please take a few moments and talk to your elected representatives and join CASADA or to find out more what you can do.